told you guys that sometimes whenever my voice is hoarse and it's like hard to speak, sometimes I feel like Marge Simpson. Okay, let's take this <clears throat> apart. So today we're going to be building the Void 65. This is going live September 9th. And it will be live until September 23rd. This was sent to me from Click Clack. This is by Anorexis, specifically Armos. This is a 65%. So there are six colors. There is black, red, brown, e-coating white, blue, and a polycarbonate. The e-coating white and the polycarbonate are going to be extra. There is a solder hot swap PCB. Plates you have five. You have the PC, palm, alu, carbon fiber, and FR4. It looks like there's an alu kit, but I guess there's also a stainless steel and copper kit. So I'm guessing that's for like the back weight. The base price is 280 and then if you get like the most expensive options, it will go up to 434 But let's just look at it. Okay, ready? Let's see what color we have. Okay, ready? Okay. Okay. Not quite yet. Okay. <laughs> oh, I have the white. So here's the board. So it's in a nice package. But looking at the case itself, so first thing is it has the arrow blocker. The two side seams are smaller, the same size. The two top and bottom seams are thicker, but this has like the cherry lip on the front. Looking from the top, there's no harsh corners. You can see the weight right there. Daughter board, JST. And then there you can see like the mounting points too. So you have four and then the three over here here's a side whoa it's a very interesting side you have the top and the bottom piece but the bottom piece right here it almost creates like an accent seam i think it's just the bottom case and the way that the top case has been machined out but it's kind of like steps right and then here you can see the cherry lip as well here's the back so here you have the weight i got the stainless steel and copper kit copper stainless steel so this is an additional 105 if you want this configuration they sent me the expensive one <laughs> so for the alu kit so it would be alu alu but then this is the stainless steel and copper right so you have the weight right here and then you have the stainless steel accent right here it looks like you can cover these up with non-adhesive feet so this is the o in the void but pretty cool back nice and then here's a usb port side so centered USB port. And then here you can see the branding of the designer right here. So centered USB port. And you can see it has like a little cutout for the port. So following the same design that you kind of see on the side where it kind of has like a little ledge or step and another step. So you can see how it goes like up, down, down. And then here is the front lip. Cool. So here you see more branding. So the void for the board, you can see like this O. For the void is the same as this O on the back. And then you can see the designer branding right there. This board has like a cutout right here for the weight. It's not uncommon for the bottom piece to be cut out right here, either for making sure the weight fits or it could be for building purposes. So to make it easier to, for example, like push the PCB out from the bottom. So this does use dual mounting. So you can either use top mount or O-ring mount. I'm guessing part of this design is to make it so that the O-ring, you don't have to like push it out from the top. You can take the case apart and the weight off and just like push it out. Okay, so this is interesting because the longer screws on the bottom, the shorter screws on the top. Oh, actually. So you have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. You actually have four more screws underneath. Whoa. All right. So this is the case. So this is the bottom. This is the top piece. So here you can see the top mounting point. So four on the top, three on the bottom. Uh, you don't have a mounting point on the space bar. And then here you can see the grooves for it, right? So top mount. So it has the cutouts for the plate to align onto it. And then the screw hole for the screws. So you can see 
around the top, around the bottom. And then the bottom piece, so you have these cut out. So this is, I guess, whenever you're pressing down on the keys, it doesn't bottom out. It has these cutouts. So when the PCB and switches come pressed down, it doesn't touch it. So for the weight, it looks like there are five screws. It's a pretty standard weight, right? So here is the bottom piece. So pretty intricate. So this is to push out the PCB. You have the channel right here on the back piece and it does go through the front, but the USB or the daughter board goes underneath right here. So it's kind of interesting because this is flipped down. So instead of this being like up and then you can just plug in the cable from the top, this has actually been flipped down so if you want to plug in the cable, you actually have to go to the back right here. So you screw this facing down, you plug in the cable in the back, you run the cable through to the front. So basically the JST insertion point is underneath. And then here you can see the mounting points for the O-ring. So there are five plate options and I have the alloy and the PC. So they sent me both the hot swap and the solder PCB. Apparently, what you guys will get, you'll have two O-rings. Looks like I only got the one, but the transparent one is the 50A. And then they'll have a 30A, which is going to be a black. These are for the case feeds to close it, so you don't see any visible screws. Non-adhesive, extra GST daughter board, and then the two PCBs, and we can look at the layout. So here you have the plate. It has really thin edges for the space bar and then the side keys. Just overall really thin parts that you can find. There's no flux cuts, however, check this out. There is this cut out right here. Oop. That almost looks like it would be for like an indicator of some sort. But yeah, there is like a cut out. Here there are cutouts. I wonder if these are like standoff points for the board. Here's the PCB. So this is the hot swap. One thing to note is that the plate does not support 6.25, but you can do split or regular backspace. Step the regular caps lock. Looks like you only have one space bar layout. The only thing you can swap on the hot swap is the caps lock and then the backspace. And then here's a solder. So this is the layout option. So for the solder, you can do step or regular caps. You can split the left shift. You can split the backspace. Has ISO support. And if you don't want these four keys, you can kind of turn this into like a pseudo numpad. You got the plus, the enter, you got the zero. And then you can split the right shift. So theoretically, you can have eight stabilizers. But just like looking at the solder PCB. Whoa. You got the Swiss cheese right here. So you can't do this on the hot swap, but you can do this on the solder. I kind of want to do the solder just to have this unique layout. You guys, my Instagram is like, I follow so many keyboard accounts, but I don't get keyboard content. <laughs> it's like very rare. I don't know what's happening. It's like not even people I follow anymore at this point. It's just what is popular. And Instagram's feeding it to me.
you guys see how I had to be like, oh, it's split backspace. <laughs> I had to turn my brain to split backspace. I like the way it sounds. So let's see, penguin belly slide. Let me look at the specs for this one. Okay, so these are uniform, but they have the curve. So let's look at this product page. So these rows scoop in, but then this space bar or the last row goes up. So they're all uniform except for this one. But it looks like you have concave and convex available. I think I'm not a fan of the concave. I think it feels good, but when you're actually typing on it, I feel like if you're not used to it, you're gonna make a lot of mistakes. It sounds good. I like it a lot. I think it looks really good with this keyboard though. So let's talk about it. This is the Void 65. It goes into group by September 9th and runs until I think the 23rd. It does have this arrow blocker and then it does have this nice like cherry lip right here. The top and the bottom bezels are going to be the same. The side bezels are going to be thinner, but also the same. And then you can see this unique layout over here. So this is only available for the solder build. The hot swap will have a more normal build. It kind of has this like pseudo seam part right here. So starting price for this board is going to be $280. They have a ton of vendors and then it does use top mount o-ring mount. So what they've done is they've made this go slant so low that in order to keep the weight one solid piece, they have just removed this part of the bottom piece. And then to incorporate or to not make this look so blank, I guess this is where they added the branding for the void, the designer's logo, and the designer's name. And then for these cuts, the top mount, the plate goes on the top, obviously, right? And so you don't have to worry about any bottoming out because it just keeps it tightly secure to the top. However, with O-ring, it's a lot closer to the bottom. And so they've cut this part out because this is where the alphas would go. So there's a little bit of room for whenever you type so it doesn't short or anything. So that's what these cuts are for. And then you see these right here. These are cut out for the stabilizers. I was super confused at first because I didn't look at the PCB yet. My first educated guess was that it was for stabilizers, but then I was like, wait, that doesn't make sense because it's a 65% and you have arrow keys here. So why are these cutouts here? And it wasn't until I looked at the PCB that I was like, oh, okay, it makes sense because for the solder one, you have this unique layout. So the stabilizer cutouts have been incorporated into the case for both layouts, right? And then another unique thing to point out is that this uses seven mounting points, not eight. So typically you would see like four and four symmetrical, or you would see like four and like four, like these two would be more condensed, this one more widespread. And that's just to avoid like having any mounting points on the space bar, right? But what they've done is they've instead the, the four and then the three, so seven. And then the mounting points for the top isn't quite the same as the top mount. So here you can see the grooves for the top mount. The O-ring mount posts are right here, so they're kind of close, right? This one is directly on it, but then if you look at this one, so here's the top mount, but then here's the O-ring. So they've moved it a little bit, but it still follows the seven mounting points, right? For both top mount and O-ring mount. These holes on the plates are actually for the weight. So if you want to unscrew the weight directly, but either way, you have to take the case apart in order to push this out. That's neat. That's cool. That's the board. My thoughts. It's a very solid board. Pricing is fair. The coding, I didn't notice anything weird about it. I like how unique this side is because while it still keeps it like fairly classy, you have the option to do this funky side. And I think that's really cool. It's a shame they weren't able to do that for like the hot swaps. They probably have a reason for that. This is a very unique layout. I don't know how many people actually would use it or like it, but the fact that, you know, it is there, that's pretty cool. In terms of sound, I would go with the O-ring if you like something more quote rounder or more balanced, but I know a lot of you guys like classic top mount. I do think that the copper stainless steel looks better, but
but it's also more expensive. So I think this board does a good job with not being like, oh, another 65 because this layout changes it because it's basically taken a 65 and you can make it into 65, but you can also get rid of the arrows if you don't use it and use it for like more functional keys and it won't look as weird. But unfortunately, it's only for solder. I think that's just like the biggest thing. If you get a hot swap, you're forced to the normie layout. But if you're willing to solder, then you can have the more unique one. In the event that you do know how to solder or you're gonna get someone else to build it, this is always like an option, which is very unique to me. In terms of build, pretty straightforward, nothing too crazy, nothing weird about it. But yeah, that's a build. Thank you, Click Clack, for sending it out to me. Thank you to the designer for stopping by. Anorexix. I appreciate it. That's the build. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you again. Yeah, that's a build. Neat.